Hello and welcome to this session of Safety for All. I'm Sarah Napoli and I serve as the President and CEO of the San Diego Police Foundation, the presenter of this educational series. Today we're out in the community to observe examples of a guiding principle of public safety. It's called Community Oriented Policing. First, I want to thank the generous sponsors who have made possible this educational series. Thank you to Adriana and Christiana Alman, Qualcomm, Barbie and Dan Spinozola, VCA Animal Hospital, and Securitas USA San Diego. And of course, thank you to all of you who've logged on today. Be sure to type your questions throughout the session into the chat box. Uh, because at the close of the program, we'll have a live Q&A with a leader from SDPD who will answer as many of those questions as we can. So let's get started by talking to a number of the talented leaders of SDPD, starting with Assistant Chief Terrence Charlo. Community-oriented policing is a philosophy which focuses on law enforcement, building relationships with the community to prevent crime. You know, we build this relationship with the community. We're able to solve issues um, that they bring up. We can't be everywhere, right? There are ears and eyes out there, and they're able to help us solve issues um, within their community. And then, you know, we're able to share information. It might not be an emergency, right? It could be a quality of life issue. Uh, we've partnered with the Community Center for Innovation that is the Jacob Center uh, for, for years. And one of the things that Jacob Center innovated is they have an organization called Writer's Block. They teach, train, and enhance these kids who are into graffiti art and take them to a level of artistry that is just amazing. And they take this this raw talent that is the youth of, of our city who without some form of structured outlet they're gonna find a way to paint and rather than having painting the underpasses or somebody's back fence or whatever other medium they can get we positively focus that energy into a, a constructive area definitely the collaboration between community and law enforcement has definitely um, grown in the past few years and there's definitely a connection with, with the kids so um, you know, we try to make that a point that we are a safe haven here and we do have a partnership with the police and school police. I can remember as a young officer in the 90s being a southeastern um, patrol officer, you know, getting the community together to deal with an issue that was kind of plaguing a, a neighborhood. So I had community meetings, passed out flyers, got the um, community members involved to solve these issues and it's actually good for community members to know the officers that work in their service area. I think the community policing approach is really important when it's done correctly and in an ethical way. Um, I know for a fact that I, I don't know necessarily what problems my neighbor is facing and that, that's something that being at Star Palace taught me to kind of reach out and learn from other people in your own community. What, are, what struggles are you facing so that we can come together and be stronger as a unit? Star Pal is a nonprofit organization that um, bridges law enforcement with kids to help them make better life choices. And they do that through programs and different events and, and actually they're knocking it out of the park when it comes to um, getting kids to, to change that perspective they have of law enforcement. Having law enforcement uh, mentoring and being partners with youth in San Diego is critically important in terms of our relationships with building safer communities, but also more trusting communities. We really want the officers to befriend the youth that they're serving on patrol every single day. And what better way to do that than to know the individuals and the families that you're serving in a more personal way. Lately, uh, there's a lot of demand on law enforcement during interactions and patrol in an enforcement capacity. So we found a lot of success at StarPal in focusing on non-enforcement interactions where it's a positive atmosphere, it's very low stress, and officers actually have a chance to have students open up to them and tell them what it's like 
living where they live and going to the school that they go to. And that really builds respect and also empathy on part of the officers that participate in addition to providing a positive atmosphere for youth to get to know the police officers themselves. A lot of kids only see officers and traumatic incidents, right? So working with Star Pow, officers are able to um, work with kids in a positive um, light where they see it's different. They know, you know, I've, I've worked with kids um, and they've said, you're human. You know, they take you out of that uniform and know that, you know, we're, we're pretty cool. So I've had kids tell me that and, and it's because of different events and stuff that we've worked with kids and, and through Star Pow, the organization that these officers are able to do that. Police officers today definitely love our community. We love reaching out to our community and the engagement and impact we can give back to our community by keeping our schools safe and by creating little leaders in our community who are gonna be good citizens um, to show civic responsibility, patriotism, leadership, um, and hard work. Um, those are some of the few things that um, the officers can give back to their schools. Having full-time officers committed from the San Diego Police Department to Star Pal makes it possible to have more impact in our programming. There's the ability to build actual relationships with an individual officer by having repeat you know, sessions with that friendly face that they're seeing in the community, uh, but also just the ability to serve multiple neighborhoods. We are able to collaborate with the patrol divisions by having two officers that are full-time committed to running these these programs and bringing in different agencies and divisions. My role is a kind of the manager and resource guide for our juvenile services team. It plays a large role in community ordering policing. We uh, manage a variety of different youth programs where we bring kids from the community um, into our facility and we um, engage with them. The School Safety Patrol program gives the kids a sense of responsibility, number one by keeping their schools safe, but also by interacting and um, having a mentorship with their law enforcement officer assigned to their school. How Safety Patrol has helped me is has taught me to be a leader, a very strong leader and a very positive leader. It has also taught me to be, communicate with other students and be very responsible. One of our success stories is a student named Martin Nunez. Martin Nunez grew up here in City Heights. He went to Rosa Parks Elementary. He grew up in a rough neighborhood where um, some of his siblings were engaged in uh, gang activity. Him not wanting to be part of the gangs in his community joined School Safety Patrol to give him a sense of structure. When he was a young child, uh, one of his, his father, I believe, was incarcerated for drug trafficking. Um, after he left the School Safety Patrol program, he went on to join our cadet program. After high school, um, he really created an engagement and a bond with law enforcement in his community where they helped him get into law school. And now he currently serves as a deputy DA in our district attorney's office. I have really enjoyed being out in the community with SDPD, seeing how police and community work together. So let's check your knowledge of community-oriented policing. I have a few questions for you. The first one is, when did SDPD initiate a community-oriented policing approach? Was it in the 1960s? That's answer A. B, in the 1980s? Or C, was it in the year 2021? Take your best guess. The second question is, which of these is a key concept in community-oriented policing? A. Effective policing is greatly enhanced by building relationships in the community it serves. B. When it comes to public safety, community members are often more aware of both the problems and the solutions, and they can be willing to share them. C. Getting information both to prevent crimes and to solve crimes comes from a strong trust between community and police. Pick your answer and we will share the correct answers at the end of our program today. There's this stigma that, you know, anybody that owns a lowrider is obviously a bad person. You know, they're obviously a gang member or something like that. And, um, and in the lowrider community, um, they feel, you know, cops are, we're targeting them. You know, 
We're always trying to pull them over, giving them tickets for this and that. Um, but that's not the case. We understand, you know. There's a lot of uh, time and love and money that goes into those cars, you know. And a lot of these people, they're family. You know, they're they're hardworking families, and and a lot of those are just their clubs, and they're based on that same family, those family values. And so we're just trying to bridge that gap and trying to show them that hey, we we get it, we understand. You know, this this is not a bad thing. This communication line, um, for us to be successful, we need to have open communication and trust by the communities we serve. It's really important in the community policing model to be hearing from the community itself about the problems they're facing. We can't go in as an organization and say, we have this great program for you, take this and your problems will be solved. That's, that's not the approach that's gonna be effective in solving the issues we're facing as a city. So we really wanna hear from the community, from the schools, from the students, from the families, what, what are issues are you seeing and how can we be a part of providing the solution? And when law enforcement comes alongside and, and is a part of addressing the needs of, of youth who aren't being, you know, given all the resources that they need to succeed, it really, it creates a powerful synergy and we're really able to, to build trust and, and know that we're doing the most as we can as a unit, as a city, to provide a brighter future for these future leaders that we're seeing on a daily basis in our schools in San Diego. As a young police officer in Southeastern Division, um, you know, I spent about seven years there and, and I've seen kids grow up. Right, you know, and, and as I patrol, I got to know some of the kids and their um, parents, and and you know, even years down the road, even within the last probably five years, I ran into a parent where you know they they said, "You remember my son, and he's doing this." So you know, very successful story, and and you know, just little things like that makes me appreciate what I do, makes me appreciate um, you know, Star Pals an organization, you know, community oriented policing, just everything that works to to building those relationships. And I think as a society, we've really moved to a lot of individualized nuclear family structures, but I know that the reality for a lot of the students that we're working with at StarPal is the family structure is very much alive and well, but it's the, the community and their neighbors who aren't necessarily paying attention to what the needs of these students and, and their families are. So. Personally, it's inspired me to be more aware and reach out and, and understand what issues others and other communities are facing so that I can come alongside and help them address those, those problems. It's one, one of the things I love most about uh, my job here is that I get to be a part of solutions and helping others um, experience life in a fulfilling and, and joyful way, which I think every human deserves. Before we wrap our program today, we want to give you the answers to the poll questions. The first question was, when did SDPD initiate a community-oriented policing approach? If you picked the 1980s, you were correct. The second question was, which of these are key principles in community-oriented policing? Well, it was a bit of a trick question because all of them were key principles in community-oriented policing, so any answer you picked made you a winner. I think you would agree with me that there could be no more important time for the community to understand what our police do, how, and why. I hope this session today has been useful towards that objective. If you would like to support our efforts to create a safer San Diego, a gift of any size is warmly welcomed on our website, sdpolicefoundation.org. If you'd like to view other sessions in the series, you will find them on that same website on our programs page. Thank you to all of our sponsors who've made this program possible, to our Safety for All champions, to our colleagues at StarPal, to everyone at SDPD, and of course, to all of you for joining us today. If you are viewing this session in a live stream, stay with us because we are going to go right into a live Q&A with Assistant Chief Charlo. Again, thank you for being with us. Our greatest wish for San Diego is safety for all.
Hello again. Glad to have you here at our Q&A. And we have an expert from SDPD. He is none other than Assistant Chief Terrence Charlot. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Glad to be here. So glad to have you here. And what we've done is pulled some of the questions that you have developed for us or that you posed in the chat and put them on two cards. So if you look at me looking over here, that's what I'm doing, is reading off those cue cards. So the very first one we have here today is how would you define community-oriented policing? I would define community-oriented policing as a strategy or philosophy uh, that focuses on building strong relationships with the community so that we can prevent and solve crimes. Okay, well, uh, the next question, one of our viewers would like to know, how does this approach benefit the community? You know, the approach benefits the community um, because, you know, we want to build a strong relationship with the community. We want to hear um, what they, what, what, what's, what issues are going on in their neighborhoods and stuff. So, um, you know, we as, as a police department feel that we need to work aside the community. We want to hear from them. We want to um, solve crimes and prevent crimes um, in, in their communities. Great. And then is community-oriented policing a new approach for SDPD? Um, no, it's not a new approach. As a matter of fact, in the 1980s, um, it was talked about. And by the 90s, it was fully implemented in our police department and continues to this day. We encourage the officers to get out of their cars and interact with the um, community members. We, like I said earlier, we definitely want to hear what issues they have in their communities. Great. Well, Chief Charlo, uh, one of our viewers would like to know what is the goal of community oriented policing? Yeah, the goal um, of community oriented policing is building those strong relationships, building the trust with the community. Uh, we can't be on every street corner, um, we can't be everywhere. So there are eyes and ears out there, and we want to work aside them so that we can solve and prevent crimes. We want, to, we want to know that their safety and we want them to know that their safety is our priority for us. Okay, well let me read this next one because this is a great question. What are some of the initiatives that promote community-oriented policing within the community? Yeah, some of the initiatives that promote community-oriented policing are just the, the events that we have out in the community, um, the community, the festivals, the different um, events. We also open our divisions because we want the community to come in and, and meet the officers that work in their service area. We have coffee with a cop where the command staff or officers will go to a coffee shop and they will invite the community so they can talk about issues and have an open dialogue. We also have community ride-alongs so that they can see what the officers see firsthand. Um, shop with the cop is another thing we do with the community during the holidays. Star Pal, great organization. Um, they bridge law enforcement with youth so that the perspective is changed and through mentorship and programs. So these kids um, look up to these officers and you know the officers kind of show them a good life choices that they can make. Great, that's a wide scope of programs and I imagine some of our viewers would like to know how they could get involved in the ones that are in their area. And so for those of you who are watching today, if you would like to find out what's happening in your neighborhood with community-oriented policing, we invite you to email the address that you're seeing in the chat or I'm gonna say it out loud here. For more information on how to get involved or find local resources, email us at Kathy, C-A-T-H-Y, at S-D, policefoundation.org and we'll have all of that information out to you. Uh, we are pulling up another question and this is how has the pandemic affected community oriented policing? Yeah, great question. Um, the pandemic affected everyone, um, especially the kids. They were unable to go to school, um, talk to their friends, their teachers, and actually police officers. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the pandemic, we had to find new ways um, to to reach out to the community. And, you know, obviously people know that um, that reaching out to the community is our, our priority and working with them. So we use other ways as far as, you know, talking on the phone. And I think a lot of people are familiar with the Zoom, right? And I had to learn that um, just to communicate with the um, community members. So we were able to solve issues in the community through, through those lines. That's great. And then there's another question related to COVID. Uh, how has crime increased, decreased, or changed since the pandemic hit? Yeah, un unfortunately, um, crime has increased, um, specifically violent crime across the nation, including San Diego. 
And I think, you know, everybody's familiar that there was some civil unrest in the last couple of years. So it's been challenging for law enforcement. Um, we're also facing staffing challenges. So, you know, we're looking um, to work with the community to assist us. We need them um, and we need community oriented policing, I think now more than ever, um, to work with the community to help us prevent and solve crimes. Oh, I so agree. Yes. And then for our final question today, what can community members do to help you and SDPD? Oh, yeah, um, definitely just, just come to our events out in the community, stop by the divisions, get to know the officers that are working in your, your area. Um, you know, we know that we want to work with you, we want to hear your concerns, we want to try to prevent crime, solve crime, know whatever issues you have in your communities. And we know that to be a successful police department, we got to have the trust and the understanding of the communities we serve. So well said. And now I want to thank you for being here today. Oh, and it's been a real pleasure to have you no, on thank board you. to handle this Q&A. And I thank SDPD for providing this opportunity for yes. folks to understand uh, community-oriented policing, which is really the DNA of SDPD. If our viewers would like to visit other sessions that we've had in this educational series, Safety for All, you can find them on our website, sdpolicefoundation.org, on the programs page. And also, if you would like to support our work and help us create a safer San Diego, a gift of any size is warmly welcomed at our website, sdpolicefoundation.org. I thank you for viewing this today, for all of our sponsors that have made it possible for us to bring this information to the community. And again, I want to tell you that our fondest wish is for San Diego safety for all.